Hello and welcome back. Today I am very excited to share with you the next step that I have learned in my game that I'm recreating. Zombies ate my neighbors in Construct 3. So in regards to my previous videos, I did a run through of the levels and shown you what I have learned so far. Now, what I have added is I've got rid of the cube square because we're in 2d um as the player and now we actually have zeke as the player with animations i know i'm so clever right i just had to watch a few youtube tutorials though to uh accomplish this but i did it and it's not perfect still but it works and it sells the effect which is what I was looking for. So just to have a brief look at the code that it requires. So we're using the W, A, S and D keys now on the keyboard. And then it's gonna simulate each animation when each key is pressed. So if we just head over to our player and now we have our animation set up, we've got idle, got left up and down and I can preview these I can do a separate tutorial on this because now I know how to do it and I'll be uh, more than happy to share how I did it but there are also tutorials that I watched you that you can go and see too but I'll be happy to create one myself um so let me just demonstrate it actually rather than trying to explain it so we're just gonna we're gonna skip the tile screen you don't need to see that we walk down and then when you release the key it goes back to idle you might be thinking well duh but with the code you actually have to tell that you want it to that you want the animation to go back to idle so I'm pressing up, go up. Then when I stop, it's gonna go back to idle. Go to left, back to idle. Go right and you stop and it goes, returns to idle. And again, when you look at the code for that. Um, oh, it's just this. So player direction is moving, set animation to idle, but then you invert that so what is what that is saying is when the player is not moving, return the animation to back to idle. So good, right? Can I um turn this off? Toggle disabled. Okay. Disable that. Oh. It's not actually doing any of the animations now. Okay, we don't want that. Toggle disable there we go Whew, saved okay moving on so another thing that i have actually done but it's not perfect again nothing's ever perfect straight away it takes a lot of practice a lot of mistakes but those mistakes turns into success it just requires a lot of determination consistency so what I'm talking about is the enemies can now follow the player. So let's just look at the code for that down here. So we've got the zombie on a pathfinder. Um, and it can also find the walls. So if it finds a wall, then it has to go around the wall rather than just stopping. And thinking, nope, there is an obstacle in my way. I am not going to move. I can't get to that player. So what this is saying is, yep, there's a wall there. But we're going to walk around that wall obstacle to try and get to that player. But we also have a line of sight behavior to the zombie. So if the player is within a certain distance, the line of sight to the player then 
the zombie will start moving towards the player to try and kill him. So let's replay the level. Move in front of the zombie. And now I'm out of sight. So it should is it gonna stop? Or is it gonna keep moving? Yeah, it stops. Let's just say I stand idle. It's gonna kill me. We start the level. How good is this looking right now? I am so impressed with it. Right, let's try the pathfinding thing now. So we've got a wall here. We are now going to go this side. Um, well, that's not bad, I guess. I mean, zombies are not very intelligent, right? But it's found that there's an obstacle in the way, so it's stopped now. Yeah, what I need to figure out next is how to actually apply the animations to the zombies. As you can see, it's got its walking, but it's just spinning round upside down. We don't want that. That is a, a little more advanced for me. I don't know how to fix that. I also need to fix that. I also need to fix that, why the audio is so delayed. Right. The zombies don't have line of sight on this. So what I also need to figure out, actually, I have all these event sheets. Now, I don't know if there is an easier way, a much cleaner way of including all the events. Because I'm, I'm only using the free edition. And I've got four events remaining. You create a free account and you get 50 events for free. And I have four left. Because I'm having to copy each of the code, the same code, from each level to the next level. Which is not what we want, really. So if anybody can help me with that, I'd really appreciate it. Um, you could just use one event sheet. I don't know. But I tried it before and I was unsuccessful on changing levels. So the only way around it that I found is that if I created separate event sheets for each level, it enabled me to go to the next level. That made sense. Like if I had one event sheet and I wanted to go to level two, level three, but it's all going to be using the same object, so it would confuse it, right? I don't know. Um, there's nothing else left to show in this video, actually. I just wanted to share with you that, making little progress, but it's awesome. What I did mention in the last video is that what I wanted to do, but like I did also just say, I have four events remaining, so I might just have to actually get rid of some levels. Because this is not actually going to be a fully functioning game. This is just for learning how to create it, actually. So... Let me just jump to level four, actually, because we do have a um, a chainsaw guy here with an animation. Pretty cool, right? Um, but I'm going to do that in the next video, actually. So I'm going to reduce it down to just... In fact, no, we'll start doing it now. So if I... Oh, all that hard work. Can I save? I'm going to save. I'm going to delete these levels. Two. St 
still have four events remaining. Do I have to delete these now? Event sheets. Delete that. Level four, level three, level two. 31 events remaining. Yay. Okay. So now the main focus for the next video. Let me just make sure everything is working again. I, sh I can't see why not. Yeah. Oops. Kill me. Right. So the main focus now moving on is to just make this one level fully functional game with an objective. We're going to collect save the neighbors maybe even get an attack animation in there that is gonna be way more advanced that that will come up right at the end depending how much more advanced i can get this um so yeah that's all i have for now in today's video if you haven't already, go and check out the previous two videos that I have on this. Um, this series, actually. I'm wanting to create a series within Construct 3 of how to learn how to make 2D games such as this. Recreating good old classics. The next one I actually want to try and recreate is Streets of Rage. I think that would be a lot easier, actually. Maybe. But I'm a bit very excited to get on with that. But until then, thank you again for checking out this video if you did. And if you haven't already, drop a thumbs up. Comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Or if you can help me out with anything, would really appreciate that. And if you want to stick with the series, want to see more content, feel free to check out my other 250 videos I have on this channel. And subscribe. That would be epic. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.